A whole lot's up. I'm gonna wait for some people to show up. Live a little early, cause I am always early. I got plenty of beverages all around. <laughs> Basically today I wanna talk about um, a lot of different things. What is up? How you doing, man? Couple people joined. Sweet. Happy Friday. We made it. <sighs> How you guys doing? No track today, bud. I, uh... I think I went too fast last time. What up, Brandon? <laughs> yeah, a little too early. Yeah, so I had a couple people message me, um, Mountain Sander time, I'm in Arizona, so it is actually like, it's like 4.50 something right now. Um, so sorry if there's any misunderstanding there as to, you know, times and all that. Uh, if you notice, I named it Hot Rod Philosophy Episode 2, which is pretty crazy. What's up, bro? How you doing? Ah, oh, man, what a pleasure. I'm so happy to have all you guys here. Um, I'll probably mention this a couple times, um, but I did an episode one a long time ago, and some of you guys are OGs. Some of you have followed me for a long time throughout all the random stuff I've done. Um, obviously, right now, I probably see a little bit more seem a little bit more together and more um, consistent, etc. Well, there was a few different times where I, um, not a few different times, there was one specific time where I attempted to um, do what, I don't know. I guess I was just trying to find myself and one of the things I wanted to do was use YouTube as an outlet. And during that time, one of the ideas I came up with was doing like this show called Hot Rod Philosophy. And I did episode one with my friend Tad Taylor like a while back. It was pretty cool. It was just kind of like talk show, podcasty type deal where we're basically just talking about like what's hot rodding to you. You know, what is, what was it like growing up? Like what got you into hot rods? Like all these different things. And hot rod general term for me, I mean anything like lower trucks, um, imports, I don't care. Like hot rod. It's just a general term, so don't hold me to that too tightly. And the audacity, I was just telling Katie, uh, excuse my language, but the ball's on me to interview myself for the second episode, right? Um, I thought it would kind of tie in a couple things, as well as other people were busy. <laughs> so some folks were busy. Um, if you want to be on an episode with me in the future, I'd love to uh, have you. Hit me up like on... Facebook Messenger or Instagram or something, whatever. I feel like I'm pretty reachable. Um, specifically, like, for this episode while I'm talking about, like, a little bit in the beginning, I just want to hit a couple things, like I'd mentioned in my Facebook post, um, where it's like, there's so much I want to do right now, and I really appreciate everyone's following everyone that is following me and I want to do these things with you. You know, I kind of said like, let's make some goals. Well, I had put up the video uh, previous to this one where we were looking at multiple builds, right? There's like four options for a build, you know, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's one episode behind. And I didn't want to confuse you guys after I, you know, was looking at a lot of the comments and then kind of thought to myself like, wow, this might be confusing because I have a lot going on. There is also Will says, remember to smash that like button. I'm bad at saying stuff like that. I should probably get better because, you know, that's what people do, I guess. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Malibu Rum. Yeah. So there's a Malibu, the Mustang, the truck and the um, Fairmont. I just want to give a little backstory to that, and I'm also going to kind of round this all out for you. This is what's in my head. I plan on being here for a while. I want to stay consistent with you guys. I want to build cool shit. <laughs> I want to build what I think is cool. I want to build what you think is cool. 
and it doesn't always have to be a second car it doesn't always have to be um fast it could be lowered like bags like i'm in some pretty broad range of vehicles so <laughs> i hope that's exciting to you because for me that's very exciting that's what cars mean to me hot rod that's like you know um and i also in that same notion what i'm talking about is it means that like all these projects I, in my head they're getting done like eventually right and if you followed me anytime or you know me like eventually for me is is pretty realistic timeline i like to i like to to get shit done so for instance my brown buick with the white top right okay yeah if you have bad service that's all good i'll, I'll put this up as a, a rerun later too if you have to go or anything um so my brown buick that i had if you went back in time um it is sitting right here i'm staring at it it's right there it's not going anywhere i'm not going to send i'm not going to sell it nothing um and it actually technically might get moved because my 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 neighbor's harassing me but um yeah that car's not going anywhere it'll be built again i have the pacer we have the nova and I also have two vehicles. I don't know if I've shown them on YouTube. Um, I did briefly show my white notch ma notch blah, 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 notchback Mustang. I think if you didn't see it, I have a 93 notchback that's white on red, five speed, five O. Nothing too crazy gonna happen to that car, mild upgrades. But the two that I haven't talked about is I have a two-door box top Fairmont that's black. You may have seen that. I have a white one, too. I have a bajillion car. The black one is Jason Deutscher. If you've ever met or heard or talked about or seen him on Instagram, he has a, a marquee wagon. He's building his lady a, a 64 big window. Um, so that car is pretty dope. I enjoy that car. I haven't even done anything to it and I already just enjoy its presence. So that's another car that's probably like an 850 car type build. That's literally also right there. I can see it. <laughs> so there's that car. I have a 64 big window short bed Chevrolet truck that I have a bunch of parts for. And it's sitting over on the other side of my yard. I don't know if I showed it. I might have to do another video, another walk around and I'll show those two vehicles specifically. And they're going to, in the future, be built. But right now, I have this opportunity with James to do one of these four cars. It's also monetarily good for me because he's going to be sponsoring basically a lot of the parts. The idea kind of came up where I was like, dude, like this SBE thing, right? Like the stock bottom end, like LS motor. Um, I mean, they're doing it kind of everything, right? As technology has increased and people have been able to get a broader tuning window, understand what's going on in the cylinder more, understand how to control uh, all different types of things while you're reading different things. Like it's just gotten really cool where you can do so much more with so much less. I think it would be cool, not to say it hasn't been done, but I thought it would be cool to do a small block Chevy like a Gen 1, like the 283s that he has, or even a 350 or something, and do a turbo, and then probably do some type of EFI conversion on the cheap, and do uh, probably the 85 Mustang that he has. So I hope that makes sense, um, and it's not necessarily going to like take over right now either. Like I still want to push forward with the Pacer. I want the Pacer to go into the 9s, and... I think it's capable with with like as a hot air car. I do think it's capable of that, and I want to I want to push that far. I don't know about the rods, and we might send a rod out of it or something. But um, with the help that I've been receiving from a lot of my friends, uh, mentoring me through the tuning process, etc., I think I think we'll do all right. So that's kind of what I wanted to start out with. I know that might have been a lot, but that's kind of like that portion. Like hopefully that makes sense and ties some things in. Another quick thing is as far as like for this channel and for like some structure I want to bring in, I want to like, I've been randomly uploading things and we did the daily uploads for the Pacer. What I want to do right now is I want to make the Hot Rod philosophy an every other Friday thing. So 
this Friday, we're doing it right now, and then I want to do every other Friday. I want to try to keep that up, um, and obviously I'll be bringing in guests. This is kind of an oddity, even though it's the second one. The idea is to have a guest here that we're interviewing and talking about different things. <laughs> Again, you know, only me would I do this. Um, so if you guys have anything you want to comment or um, uh, let me know if there's something, idea you have for structure, um, things like that, please feel free to comment. Let me know. In, in this stage of where I'm at, I... I realize that you guys and me are so tight. Like, you know, I, I try to, I talk to every single one of you guys like that comments. Um, it's malleable, right? Like we have so much stuff that we can be doing and um, you guys have a lot of good ideas. You know, it's, it means a lot to me that most of you guys want me to do what I want to do, which is awesome. And I'll do what I want to do. Like I won't do something just for people. Um, but it, it's like a give and take. Like I really enjoy doing things that you guys want to see because maybe there's something that I can try that you've thought about. Um, you know, it's like when I was growing up, there's stuff that I wanted to see like in magazines, you know, like in car craft and stuff. And when you'd finally see something similar to what you wanted, you're like, hell yes, that's what I've been waiting for. Like, you know, like do that, please. So yeah, completely cool with that. Let me know if there's stuff you think about or, um, you know, whatever. <clears throat> so that kind of does it for my intro and now here here comes the interesting part where I kind of want to get into a structure of Hara philosophy like what I what I kind of see it as with myself which is gonna be weird that's why I'm drinking a beer I don't usually drink that much but I'm gonna drink this so I can get through this <laughs> One of the questions, okay, one sec. I just saw you with, yep. No carburetors. No, these are all actually LS motors. There's a whole pile of them back there. <laughs> um, and I appreciate that, thank you. One question that I always wanna ask people is like, you know, where did it all start for you, right? Like where did hot rod become a thing? And for me, it was like at a young age, I have this theory that for my generation, I think, I think Jesse James was really big. Like, obviously that's a pretty broad statement and it's also like, duh. But if you look at like when I was growing up, my dad liked cars, but it wasn't like, you know, he wasn't out like rebuilding engines or pulling motors or anything like that. Um, but when I started watching like monster garage, I started seeing things like, yeah, see, as soon as I said that monster garage was amazing. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like, Monster Garage was amazing. And then, um, get to see, like, the, um, oh, crap. What were the, the, the shows with Jesse James where he did, like, the documentary of, like, you know, him building the bikes and all this. Motorcycle Mania. It's, like, Motorcycle Manias were huge. Like, you just get to, like, hang out with this guy and see, like, his perspective on things. Um, so that, that big portion of my early childhood, I think, really made me want to be someone who could I remember thinking like I want to be able to rip a transmission apart I want to be able to like build a rear end like I want to be the dude standing at the drag ship or the car show when someone comes up they're like you know who built your motor who built your this like me I did biker build off Steve yes biker build off was the shit I loved biker build off so you can really kind of say that that was a huge portion of it for me I think another like Side note to that was like, I just really think I was someone that was like born to like cars. Like my dad said when I was little, like it was just always like, always wanted cars. You know, I get a go-kart when I was in like fifth grade, I rip it apart because I want to see how it works. Like, you know, that sometimes is just like who you are. And for me, that is kind of who I am. You know, I'm sitting in a garage full of stuff ripped apart. So <laughs> nothing's changed in all these years. As I got older, I definitely started to be, you know, I was playing a lot of sports and stuff, so I wasn't really like learning to wrench or anything. So through high school, I had a couple cool trucks. Um, thanks to my parents, you know, I was definitely super fortunate. I had like a really cool Dodge Dakota with like a 318 on a five speed. That was awesome. Um, and then I had a short bed 1500 that was really sick. Um, and 
I had that until I was pretty much out of high school into the military. I went into the the National Air National Guard. And after that, I got uh, a bag, bagged S10 from somebody, and it was pretty much done. Yeah, bought that from you, man. You remember? <laughs> so got this S10, and things started rolling. I didn't build it. Um, I just got the itch, right? I'm like 20, 20 or 20. No, I was like 19, and I was like, dude, I've always wanted a hot rod. I'm like a grown-up now, so like, let's get a hot rod. And that's when I got the GTO. Um, so I've had my purple GTO since I was 19. Good or bad, I don't know. I mean, it was a lot of money. I, I originally wanted a, like a Nova or a Chevelle. I remember I was like in basic training, like running, running all these laps. And it was like early in the morning or whatever, late at night, I can't remember. I'm just running and I'm like picturing like the car like manifesting this car in my head and like the biggest thing i would remember is like the shifter i always joke if you guys have been around like the shifter fetish i was definitely all about like thinking of the interior like sitting in the car uh you know like banging gears and like thinking about the way it would look so yeah it's pretty deeply ingrained the uh the hot rod in me get out i buy that car and it had a stock 400, stock 400 trans. As time goes on, I'm kind of like partying a lot. When I was younger, I did a lot of partying. <laughs> and as I started to come out of that, I realized like, you know, I like, I like hot rods. Like, let's do this shit. And um, yeah, all the S10 comments for sure. S10s are the best. This was the 01 Extreme, by the way. It was, uh, but all the Extreme kit was taken off of it. The dude did a really good job like suicide doors five link wishbone kit and then uh had uh had like a viper alarm with like an ox so you could like dump it and then lift it off the keyless and you could like trip people out all the time it was awesome <laughs> i love that drug side note i have a full full air ride kit for the c10 possibly if you guys want to see that <laughs> yeah stereos were super big for me when i was younger too i love stereos the uh the gto i did some things and then i built a 455 that's how i met james you know i i hurt i hurt the 400 and after i hurt the 400 it was kind of like i was trying to find someone to help me you know what i mean i didn't really know much and I was actually at work where that's where James and I met was where we used to work. And I was talking about cars with my boss, who was like a VW guy, really nice guy. He was like, you need to go talk to James Rourke. And I was like, who is James Rourke? So I go over there and uh, that's how me and him started our friendship. Um, he, <laughs> you know, he helped me find that 455. Um, I got it all together. That was like the first time I was ever involved, like with an engine build. We did it at a, I got it. Uh, done with a local shop and they actually let me help them out they were super chill well i get the motor in and i heard it then i went to the big block chevy <laughs> so we put the big block in it uh that build went pretty well uh the car went 12 20 at 100 and 112 um like a bunch of times i raced the crap out of that car because it was like like i said like the first hot ride i had and i learned a lot tuning and you know um you know, went like 170 to 60 foot. It was a fun car. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, so after that, shortly, we got the Buick. I got the Buick from James, and then that's when the Turbo Less thing happened. He turned me on to um, he turned me on to Matt Happel with the Sloppy Mechanics guys. I was like, dude, that's super cool. You know, they're going fast, and they're doing it cheap, and that's what it's all about. And so I um, started doing that, and it just completely escalated for me, and yeah, next thing you know, I guess I'm here. <laughs> There's some, some more stuff in between I should probably get into. <laughs> Whew. All right, that was like a lot of word vomit. Any, uh, any comments so far while I catch my breath? <laughs> or things you want me to talk about or questions as I'm going on my self-interview? <laughs> Let's see. 
Cool. Ugh. What's your knob? What does that mean? <laughs> it's not a Corona. You don't need to unsubscribe. It's a... It's a Soul. Soul is a... It's the good Mexican beer. I don't usually drink too much, but when I do, I have a Soul. Uh... My job, so that's a good question. I'll actually get into that because I'm more than willing to be kind of transparent with you. I'm currently not working. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I was building a car in like 16 days and videoing and doing all that. Well, it's cause I don't actually have a job right now. My background is in aviation and I have an AMP, which is the aerospace and uh, propulsion license that you get from the FAA. So when I joined the military, I was, um, I eventually became a uh, crew chief on F-16s. That's actually how Katie and I met. Um, she was also a crew chief on 16s. We both don't do that now. Um, I went and did some stuff overseas and that's kind of what happened after I was doing the dick tripping. Um, if you've looked back or if you've been around since then, um, it kind of got like confusing, right? Like it was like, oh, something happened, boom, he's gone. Yeah, I went and head and I did some, uh, I did some deploying overseas and I was working for a couple different companies doing aerospace stuff. I decided to come home and when I came home, um, I tried a couple different things, but the biggest thing that calls to me and has called to me is like, I just really want to be... I really want to be involved in something that feels passionate. Um, I think a lot of people do. Not everyone finds what it is, and that's okay. I mean, give it your best shot, and if you do find something, wouldn't it be great if you could do that? That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, I've been super fortunate to have folks around me, Katie, James, my family, all my friends, be really supportive of me doing things like this. and. I'm gonna stay consistent, I'm gonna stay here with you guys, and I'm gonna do my damnedest to, to make something of it. So, you know, I wasn't really gonna get into that, but I appreciate the question, and I think it was kind of good to give that background because that is where I've come from. So, if it looks like <laughs> I, I don't have any idea what I'm doing when I'm doing stuff, it's very possible, because I've only worked on planes professionally. <laughs> Which you would think I would be better, right? That's what most people think, but you'd be surprised what planes look like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So there's been a lot of, uh, like I was talking earlier about me going through like the current plans of what I'm doing. Nathan Shaw of One Guy's Garage. See this, buddy? I'm wearing your dang shirt, man. I wear the heck out of these things. <laughs> he and I have talked a lot about like uh, the project ideas I have and what's to come. I'm just super curious, like what you guys, what you guys are into. Um, I think I have a decent plan of what I want to do, but it, it honestly does. I'm actually curious. With the pacer for the rest of the year and even the Nova, there are a couple of events that I'm really interested in, and it just is gonna depend on a couple things, unfortunately, and I need to hone in on which ones. Now, like Rocky Mountain Drag Week, or whatever, Rocky Mountain Drag Week, Drag Week, I'm pretty sure those are done, like they're already sold out. And on top of that, their tech is pretty intense. You have to tech, and then you also have to go through like the National Highway Safety Association, I think, too. Like, I don't know if that's completely correct, but that's what I've heard, and I'm sure I could maybe like get through with the pacer eventually, but like right now I'm way, way off that. Um, <laughs> ah, dude, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm gonna sidebar really quick off that comment. Um, the comment was talking about that my videos help to motivate and um, I've said it in a couple of videos, but one of the mission, like the mission statement that I have here with this channel and with everything that I do is to inspire, to motivate, and to entertain. 
I found that that's my purpose. Earlier when I was doing like dick tripping and like what I what I was confused. I didn't know what it was, but I knew there was something there. And now after all this time, after all of this um, kind of searching and understanding, trying to understand like what is my passion, like what can I bring to them, like what what uh what am I gonna portray? Because like just to make YouTube videos is fine, but like I want to do my damnedest to create something that I think is worth following. You know what I mean? I want like to create friendships. I want to be able to, like I said, inspire, motivate, entertain. I want people to be like, like, damn, like that. I just made me want to get up out of my seat and go into my garage or go, not even just, you know, cars isn't, isn't everything in life, right? Like there's our relationships, there's our, our jobs that we want to be successful at or our entrepreneurial ideas or whatever it is, our bodies that we want to maintain. Like I want to help give all of what I have to make your life better. And so thank you for that comment. And I just wanted to add that little tidbit because I think it's pretty important that you know that that's what I'm here for and that's what I'm gonna to continue to try to do. Back to events, off the sidebar. There's a lot coming up, like I had mentioned before, The um, I think the drag weeks are out for this year for sure. Not to say that they're always out, but just for this year. Except for like Nathan Shaw's one guy garage drag week, which is what I'm wearing, which might be a possibility, but we haven't even talked about that. There's the fact that Minnesota, which is where he's at, um, is really far away. <laughs> it is like a day and two hour drive. So I was doing the math and that's like easily a $2,000 trip, like with fuel and, you know, if you have to stop, et cetera. Um, I don't really have that kind of money right now, so we'll have to look and see what I can do. One thing I know for sure is that I have the cage for this pacer. I have it already, and like the bare minimum we're gonna do is at least get it good to 10-0, so it's safe down to a 10-0, and then like my local tracks will allow me to continue to push past that. That's like my bare minimum, is we're gonna keep pushing the pacer. Everything else is kind of icing on, on the cake. You know, if I can get to Texas 2K or LS Fest East or something like that. First track is Tulsa, Oklahoma, dude. All right, so Nathan said the first track is Tulsa. Well, comment up the other ones. What are the other ones? Um, is it still three tracks? I have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, we could try to do that, you know, and um, thanks for watching. Thanks, man. People are dipping out, no problem. This one probably won't be as long. God, I'll probably do a little shorter version. Eventually, when we have a, a guest, we'll be able to go a little further, but I don't want to keep you guys here unless we ramble for too, too long. Um, that would be pretty rad because I would love to, I love Nathan and his family. They're great people, and I'd love to see them again. I've already been trying to talk to him about going up and doing some uh, some fabrication in his shop or whatever just to get my hands dirty on fabrication because that's something that I'm really, really into and I, I want to continue like getting better at. That would be pretty rad to go, oh, you know, that could be like another dick tripping thing because I don't think that is dead. I just think that was something that I was doing and it didn't work out exactly how I thought, but I just learned, right? And I could go further with it. We could do more. The original idea behind that, if you don't know what I'm talking about, was to go and meet these people that I've met through the internet and through Facebook, Facebook Messenger, forums, all that stuff, that our car guys or have a shop or whatever and like are willing to hang out. And we go out there and, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, Kansas, Kansas City, four hour mile round trip. Hmm. So that might be a possibility. We might be able to go to one guy's garage drag weekend, which would be pretty badass in my opinion. Yeah. <coughs> I might have to give uh, the Falcon a run for its money. What? <laughs> I'm talking about Nathan's wife's Falcon. That's pretty badass. It's a four-cylinder turbo. That's definitely rad. Definitely, definitely rad. The other one I was thinking of was Power Cruise, which has been mentioned by a lot of you. And I was talking to... Pavel, a buddy of mine that is in 
Minnesota about Power Cruise. It sounds super rad. It's a multiple day event and you just get to like bludgeon the car for days on end, drag racing, cruising, whatever, burnout pads. And I think that would be super cool. <laughs> Something about just being beating a car for like multiple days is really fun. Like LS Fest showed me that, that that was really, really fun. <laughs> I'm surprised that that thing is, I didn't blow it up. May not be the biggest deal ever, but I think it was pretty impressive like that I didn't do that. <laughs> what else did I want to talk about while we're here, while I got you? Um... Oh man, see, honestly, Power Cruise is probably the best event ever. <sighs> Power Cruise, a day and two hour drive. Hmm. I don't know, man, it's like 1800 miles, which I'm not afraid of, but it's like, you know, fuel and stuff. So we'll think about it. I'll definitely, definitely think about it. <laughs> oh. Ooh, you guys, if... I'll put this out there. If Dario goes to Power Cruise, because he just commented, he said that they're debating on going. I think his your drive's about just as bad, isn't it, dude? You did the drive. Okay, fair enough. Because you're up there, right? Sorry, I'm commenting that people are... <laughs> I'm talking to people commenting. But it, 18 hours. Okay, so... That's still pretty bad. <laughs> So if Dario brings the Mini to Power Cruise, then I think the Pacer almost has to go because they bonded, like, pretty hard at LS Fest. Like, they were friends. Like, they liked each other, you know? I'm just saying, like... And also, also Pavel was telling me that there's 8th mile, like, no prep, like, Street Outlaw style arm drop drag racing, which I think would be super fun in the Pacer. I, would, I love drag racing, so that would be super fun. I'm gonna think on that. I'm gonna pocket. I'm gonna pocket those two as uh, maybe my one and two, and then uh, okay, all right. So Power Cruise and Nate Shaw's One Guy Garage Drag Weekend are my top two right now, and then LS Fest East. I'm gonna put those into my crosshairs and see what I can do, cause I think that would be super rad if I could make it out. Definitely a Power Cruise. I love. I love up there. It's really nice. I just don't want to go in the winter because it sounds terrible. And it's like, if I could show you outside right now, the pool is gorgeous. While I have you here, in the beginning I said I would show you the other projects. Um, people that are still here, if you want, should I pop you off of the tripod and then show you the Fairmont and the C10 before we end this? I'll give you, I'll give you a couple seconds. I don't see why not. We can totally do it. It's definitely bright outside. We're just gonna do it. It snowed a bit a few weeks ago. Something's wrong with you guys. I don't even know why you, why do you guys even? All right, we're going mobile. All the other Harad philosophies are not gonna be mobile. This is just a weird one, okay? Bear with me. I'm bringing this. Okay, let's flip you around. Here's numero uno. This is, this is a, uh, yeah. Here's the Fairmont. This is kind of, this is my lady love. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I'm getting this. This old girl's going away. Say what you will, but look at that. Oh, because of Lake Superior. So this car, as I said before, is. I did not build it. I didn't do any of the stuff to it yet. See the bumpers are tucked. We have some nice welds with caps. This is that like an 83 or 84,000 mile Fairmont? Black on black. Oh yeah, she's fresh. Hold on guys, I'm trying to keep over your comments. Keep them coming, I can't see. Time frame on the Nova. Okay, as I'm showing you this, uh, let me finish showing you this, and then I'll take you around the Nova really quick before we end. So this thing, okay, yeah, buddy. 
I don't wanna, look at that, look at that. She done up. It's got a spool, 355s, all kinds of nastiness. And then uh, I'll show you the under the hood really quick. And then we'll go to the Nova. Yes, this lady wants to get down. Oh man, how am I even doing this one-handed? This is super good. Boom. So, yeah. Flaming River Rack, AGE. Strange Struts. SN95 front disc brakes. Roll control. Proportioning valve. Yeah. That's my girl. Love that car. So that's that's another vehicle that will be getting done. Let's go look at the Nova really quick. <clears throat> so I did a bunch of work to it um, off camera. Like straight up. <laughs> but it was just kind of stuff that needed to be done. And honestly, it wasn't like groundbreaking things. <laughs> the rad mount that I get teased for. So the rad's in. I actually put water in it. And it's holding water even though it's like completely been quote, quote, fabricated on by me. And I cut it all up. Oh, the Triple J lot. So Triple J's is James's yard. It is not a, not here at the house. Headers are in, ECU, wiring, all this stuff. She's pretty much getting there. We're just waiting on the drive shaft. I'll finish the exhaust. Tanks in, fuel lines ran, brake lines done. Let's get in the shifter out of the GTO, new carpet, all that stuff. So next week is our four-year anniversary and we are taking this car to our favorite restaurant downtown for a, a date so it will be running within a week period mark my words mark, mark my words we're walking over to the c10 I'll show you the c10 then we'll wrap this guy up all right give me a stop yodeling at you oh, this thing is like an exile by itself over here <laughs> by yourself so this one already has a name and it's going nowhere its name is Charlotte she is a Texas girl this is a straight six it was a three on the tree it has a tree growing into it, it has a uh, pretty sought after smash hit by the Perry Company. Front grill guard thing that's pretty dope. It has a big back window, which is like my, has to be a big back window. It's a custom cab. It's pretty rad. I really like this truck. The worst of this truck is right here. Has some bad rust up top, but it's not too bad. I really like it. This eventually will get the motor that was in Snowflake. That's the plan. Boom, some six lug steelies that'll go on with some caps. And then I have bags, but I also have uh, static stuff. So we'll probably static drop it first. And uh, I have a T56 and I have some turbo 400s laying around. So it's gonna either be T56 or a turbo 400. I'm not positive yet. Comment below, T TH400. Or a T56. <laughs> My boat's T56. It's just expensive. So to put a, you have to put the shifter on the forward mount and it's kind of spendy there. Well, folks, that is it for me. I really, really appreciate you guys hanging out. Hold on. I'm gonna get some noise. Boom. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. It was a blast. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna let you go a little early. T56 in bags, yeah, see? I have like the whole AccuAir kit. It's pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> if, you've, if you've never heard of like the AccuAir stuff, um, definitely check it out. It has like ride level sensors in all four corners. So that way when you're like airing the truck up or down, it doesn't get offset like if you ever had a bad vehicle like it would have like one bag that's like 
Mrrr, or like if you have like a gas tank on one side, it's like Mrrr, like it's annoying. Excuse me. <laughs> well, we're gonna go grab some dinner, and uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. I <laughs> bag it yesterday. <laughs> I know. All I need is uh, you know like thirty six hours in a day, and I could get all of these projects done. So that's what I'm saying is we have a lot of potential around here. There's a lot of potential. It's just going to be time and making some videos and making some money so I can build cars. <laughs> I appreciate all your comments. Um, you know, I, like someone reminded me earlier, if you don't mind, throw me, throw me a like, I guess. I guess that does something <laughs> before you leave. So we're going to do dinner right now. And then probably look for a video that, like, beginning of next week, I'll do a, a, a Nova video. Um, and then also next week, we will be getting into James's Tempest build. So that'll be rad because, you know, well, it's going to be pretty sick. I think he's leaning towards the L29 for those that are wondering. I think the L29 is going to go into it, which will be pretty cool because... Not too many people do those. We'll do like an engine build video. We'll do a lot. So we'll be getting content uh, from there as well because he's very, very selfless with uh, what he's doing. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. It was a blast hanging out. Until not next Friday, but the Friday after, we'll get a guest. <laughs>